So in this video, I'm gonna explain how to weave all your boxes into one grid that kind of makes you the master of the fretboard, that really lets you play whatever you hear anywhere on the board. Let me just give you a quick story about how I got to this idea. Uh, right when I got out of college, I kind of ditched the Segovia scales that I had been studying in college because I realized they just like they weren't really doing what I wanted in my playing. And I remembered something that my, my friend Greg Johnson, a saxophone player, taught me in high school. He had this idea that, you know, when you're soloing, you really want to be able to play whatever you hear. The main goal of practicing this stuff is to make your fingers responsive to what's going on in your inner ear. And I realized that, like, after thinking about it for a week or so, that the, the ideal system was going to be something that really just helped me know where all the notes I might want to play were. And so I really kind of was trying to exhaust all the notes in a particular key in one particular area going across the strings that really wouldn't force my hands to stretch too much. Like I maybe would allow what I call slinky shifts where you kind of go like in and out like that, but you try to generally keep things to a four fret span. And you know, the, the really nice thing that I've done here is I've organized all the boxes by the mode that they kind of represent. If you take like the bass note as the lowest note, or the, lo the lowest note as being like, the key note of the mode, and, and then you kind of weave them together all in one key. And it makes a really nice little system that lets you cover the bases pretty easily. So, and the first thing you want to do is kind of learn all these shapes first. And then ideally, you want to be able to name every single note in the boxes. That's another video I'll cover, is like how to learn how to do that. Um, but once you've kind of, you know, like kind of done all the boxes and been able to name all the notes in them, you really want to start to see if you can sort of string them together sort of putting things to a metronome, just going... And once you kind of get through a box, up and down, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you want a quick break, maybe a measure or so, and then bam. So, you know, you kind of learn the shape, you learn to name the notes, you start playing them one at a time, sort of sequentially, and with giving yourself a little break in between, but if you know them well enough, you should be able to go bam, 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 without getting thrown off your game. After that, a good step to do is uh, an exercise I teach in this series called the shifting grid, which really starts to connect the boxes one at a time. and really gives you, it really kind of forces you to see two boxes at the same time, which really deepens your knowledge of them individually. And I mean, I mean, at that point, usually, once you've done that exercise, not only can you kind of weave everything together and connect it all in one big thing, uh, but you also know the individual boxes really, really well. So I mean, you're definitely ready to start transposing it and throwing it into all different kinds of music that you might do and trying to make music with it. And you can do that in any style you want to do. It's mostly just to show you what notes are going to kind of work in the area you're in. Um, a couple other exercises I do in this series, which are also kind of jams, which are sort of like musical ways of practicing this stuff. Um, I do a thing called Alap Jor and Jala. It's, a, uh, it's sort of an Indian form of really kind of like taking things in sort of a slow tempo this way and gradually building the speed to get to know a pitch space. Um, you know, th there's things you can do with looping and practicing chord tone solos. That's a huge deal. You know, practicing chord tone solos in a particular area of the neck. Um, doing the dad gad mode lessons so that you kind of understand, okay, well, how does the modal structure of all this stuff work? I mean, that's all really, really helpful towards integrating all the boxes that you learn into your playing. But it's a matter of, you know, you learn the boxes first, then you start to work them in some other exercises so you deepen your knowledge of them, and then you really start to use them in music. Well, I suppose you can start to use them in music as soon as you want. Um, but the more ways you use them, the deeper you're going to know them, and the more things you're going to be able to use them for you know, overall. So uh, there's a bunch of exercises in this series. Learn the shapes, you know, do all these things with them as much as you can just to kind of bore them in, and you're going to find your playing opens up incredibly. It's incredible how much this opens up your playing. So yeah, whichever of those things interests you, check down in the description box. I should have links to all of them down there as soon as they're out. So yeah, hope you become the master of your guitar neck.